Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace and welcome to worship with the Lower Prince George's County Cluster of Churches. This is the day that the Lord has made and we're rejoicing and we're glad and we're glad to be in the service of the Lord one more time. We're glad today that you have joined us, whether you're in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia areas, or whether you're across the country or around the world. We're glad that you've joined us in worship today and we say welcome. The Lower Prince George's County Cluster of Churches is made up of two churches, the Journey United Methodist. Methodist Church, which is pastored by Reverend Michael Parker, um, and uh, Gethsemane United Methodist Church, which is pastored by myself. I'm Reverend Ron Triplett. And we are just happy, happy, happy to be worshiping together because God is good and God is worthy of the praise. God is worthy of the glory. God is worthy of the honor. Don't you agree? Hallelujah to God. I invite you now to press that like or heart button if you're on YouTube or Facebook. Then also, why don't you just type in, if you just let us know that you're here. Just type in, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Find somebody else. Type it in. Go ahead and do that right now. I'm glad to be here. And if you're on, uh, if you're on joining us on Zoom, go ahead and type in, I'm glad to be here. We just want to know that you're here today and with us and in the service of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I invite you now to turn up the volume on your device. Open up the door of your spirit and let us engage in worship together. Receive ministry now from the Gethsemane United Methodist Church Music Ministry. Oh, 
of mine. You've given me another chance. Say over my circumstance. You've given me another chance. Over my children, you reign. Over my life, you reign. 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 You reign.
let's pray together. <clears throat> Loving God, we praise you and we honor you and we thank you so much for another day that you've allowed us to see. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your kindness and your grace. We thank you because you are God and God alone. Ain't nobody God but you. And we appreciate you and we thank you, Lord God, for being God all by yourself. We thank you because you're a great God and you have great intentions for us, Lord God. We thank you because your word says that all things are working together for the good to have them that love God and who are the called according to God's purpose. We thank you because you have plans and plans for a future and a hope for us, Lord God, and you don't have plans to harm us, but you have plans to do us well. And we thank you for that. We acknowledge your presence, Lord God. We acknowledge your presence among us. We acknowledge your presence in our homes. We acknowledge your presence in this virtual sanctuary. And we ask, Lord God, that you manifest yourself. Lord God, sing through the singers. Lord God, pray through the one who's praying. Lord God, preach to the preacher today. Uh, play through the musicians today in the name of Jesus. And have your way, Lord God, in every home. Lord God, in every heart. Lord God, have your way among those who are listening, those who may be scrolling on Facebook, Lord God, scrolling on YouTube. Lord God, let them hear something that would prick their heart and encourage them and cause them to live for you, Lord God, in a deeper way. We pray, God, that you're saved today, healed today, delivered today, set free today, give answers today, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We thank you and we praise you in advance for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, hear the scripture today from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. Here begins the reading of God's word. Later, Jesus himself appeared to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. They set out on a boat, and throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. He said, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they did. And there were so many fish that they could not haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in a boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from the shore, only about a hundred miles. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. Simon got up and pulled the net to the shore. It was full of large fish. 153 of them, yet the net hadn't torn, even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took bread, and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This is, how, this is now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we all said, thanks be to God. Friends, receive ministry from the music ministry of Gethsemane United Methodist Church.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of you agree that Jesus is the living word? Hallelujah. Why don't you just lift your hands and give God glory here? Come on, open up your mouth and let praise come out of your lips. Let praise escape your lips now. Hallelujah. We bless you, O living word. We honor you, O living word. You, O God, you are the living word. You speak and men live. You speak again, and men do not live. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. Hallelujah. You are the living word. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, give us what we need here. Send your word here to help us Heal us, Lord God, and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Hallelujah. Great is the servant, clarity of thought, conciseness of speech, and the anointing that destroys every yoke. Touch your people here. Give heart to receive and a will to obey. We thank you in advance for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Truly today, we want to give honor to each and every one person here today. We thank God for, for Journey, United Methodist Church. Come on and clap your hands for Journey. Hallelujah. We thank God for the pastor of Journey, my friend and colleague, the Reverend Michael Parker. Come on, God, let's celebrate him now. Thank God for his leadership. Thank God for his anointing. He is our gift. Amen. Thank God for the Gethsemane United Methodist Church. Thank God because there's hope on the hill. I thank God for each and every one of you who are part of Gethsemane. And then I thank God for those of you who are worshiping with us who may not be associated, who may not be formally connected with either church but you have been journeying with us and you're worshiping with us right now. We thank God for you. Wherever you are, in the United States of America, in Ohio, in California, New York, Florida, wherever you are or across the country or across the world, should I say, in South Africa, in Japan or Thailand, wherever you are, we say God bless you and welcome. We thank God for each and every one of you. I, I want to... Um, I want to highlight a verse uh, from our scripture reading today, uh, uh, verse, verse number five. Jesus said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, no. Verse six, he said, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Have you ever had something that you are good at? Perhaps maybe it was your job. I hope that you're good at your job. So maybe it was your job that you're good at. You're great at numbers. You're great at uh, you're great at fixing cars. You're great at uh, you know whatever job that you have. You're great at teaching. You're great at customer service. Uh, that that's something that you're good at. Or perhaps maybe it's a hobby. A hobby like gardening. A hobby like sewing, a hobby again like fixing cars or putting things together. You may like to um, you may like to build cars. You may like to build model cars or uh, things like that. Have you ever had something? And I hope that each one of us have located something in our lives that we have a niche for and that we're good at. And you know what to do with this. You know when to do it. You know how to do it. You know how to make things happen with what you're good at. And it is good. In fact, you're good at it. You're great at it. You're excellent at it. Some of you are even superior at what you do that is your niche, so to speak. And have you ever, but I just want to ask, have you ever experienced a time when you went to do that thing that you are good at, but it didn't turn out quite right? Whether it was cooking a dish, 
or, or a special plant that you had, had, had uh, planted, whether it was sewing something or fixing a car, building a structure, putting together a piece of furniture, even parenting you just, that you just don't have, you just don't have it. Your, your energy is off uh, in some way, shape, or form, and it just did not work out for you. My question is, what did you do when this happened? I'm wondering, did you keep on doing things the same way? Did you keep on making the same dish the same way? Uh, did you keep on baking the same cake the same way? Did you keep on putting that, that, that piece of furniture together the same way? Did you, did you keep on doing things the same way? Or did you try to change and do something different? Generally, friends, when something is not, going, not coming together quite well, it pays to do the following. It pays to do the following. Number one, pause. Number one, pause. Just, just take a break. Just take a break. You may look at it, but just take a break. Number two, reassess. Reassess what you're doing. Reassess what's happening in that moment. Reassess your, out, reassess your desired outcome versus what you got, your, your uh, realized outcome. And number three, make the necessary adjustments. Once you have reassessed, you may uh, say, well, I might have might tried this different or you might have put this in a different place or whatever the case may be, but you, I want to assess, suggest that you make the necessary adjustments. And then number four, try it again. Try after you have determined what the adjustments are, uh, go ahead and try that again. Usually, following these simple steps, will get you to the problem, will help you to locate the problem, to help you to see what went wrong, and help you to problem solve and figure out a solution. You know, friends, it has been said uh, by, it has been pinned on a number of different people, that, but it has been said by somebody, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So we don't want to do the same thing over and over again and expect that it will turn out different. We got to find out what, what happened and make the adjustments and then try it again. As we join our text today, friends, the Johannine writer describes the third occurrence of Jesus appearing to his group of disciples. The disciples in this particular text are in Galilee after the resurrection. If you look at the other, uh, if, if you look at the other accounts, uh, Jesus' uh, place where he appeared to, this, uh, to certain disciples were, was in Jerusalem. But in this particular text, it was in Galilee. And so uh, the disciples are in Galilee after the resurrection, and Simon, who is the one who's called Peter, he decided that he would go fishing. He said, I'm going to go fishing. Uh, I don't know what they were doing while, while they were just together. I'm not sure if they were not doing anything or if they couldn't figure out what to, what to do after all that had happened, but Simon decided that he would go fishing. Maybe Simon went to fishing to clear his mind. Maybe Simon went fishing to prepare to go back to, to normal life, to find a sense of normalcy. Maybe he wanted just, maybe Simon just had a taste for some fresh fish. We, we just don't know the exact reason why Simon Peter wanted to go fishing, but what, what we do know is that he decided that he was going to go fishing. And so not only did he decide that he was going to go fishing, but the scripture says that Thomas went, Nathaniel went, Zebedee's sons went, and two other unnamed disciples went. Uh, they all decided, they said, hey, we're going to go with you. This, uh, by some commentators, may, may have illustrated the apostasy of the disciples, like they had just abandoned Jesus and gone on their way. I'm not sure that I see that in this text, uh, or it could mean or it could suggest that the disciples just were aimless and did not know what to do. That could be a more reasonable conclusion in this text. However, the text just says they decided to go fishing, and so that's what we're going to go with right now. The Bible says that they boarded a boat. They boarded a boat. Perhaps maybe it was Simon Peter's boat since he was a professional uh, fisherman. But whose ever boat it was, they boarded that boat. And the scripture says that they fished all night long. They fished all night long, but they caught 
nothing. They did not have a stitch of fish, not a perch, not a piece of whiting, not a, not a piece of tuna even. They did not have anything. They caught nothing. Now, I need you to understand these were no novices. These were professional fishermen. They had thriving businesses at one time. They, uh, they were people who knew what to do, yet they caught nothing. And so here they are, it's all through the night, looking at their fish, looking at their net, should I say, looking, taking it up, putting it down again, taking it up, putting it down again. I don't know what they were talking about. Maybe while they were out there, they were talking about the fact, talking about what the things that Jesus had done. Perhaps they were talking about how Jesus appeared to them in just, uh, just the chapter, just a few days before. I'm not so sure what they were talking about. I'm not so sure what was going in there, going on in their minds, but what I do know is they were not uh, busy taking in fish because they weren't catching anything. And so here we see that we come, the timeline goes, and there was early, it was early in the morning, and Jesus was standing at the shore, but they did not recognize him. Jesus was right there watching them. We don't know how long Jesus was there, and when Jesus appeared, but he, when morning came, Jesus was right there at the shore. And Jesus was watching them. You know, friends, if I may stop right here and say there are times in our life that we are so caught up in ourselves. We are so caught up in our doldrums. We are so caught up in our blueness. We are so caught up in our depression. We're so caught up in our situation. We're so caught up in the fact that we do, don't have this. We're not here. We're not there. We're not where we think we are to be in life. We're so caught up and we're so in our heads that we fail to recognize Jesus. We fail to recognize the presence of the Lord. We fail to recognize the power of God. We fail to recognize that it's Jesus who is with us and Jesus has been there all along. And so the disciples in this text, they did not recognize Jesus. I, I don't know if they saw him or not, but we see the text saying, the text saying Jesus called out to them and said, children, have you caught anything to eat? Uh, yes. Uh, he was calling out to them. And this, this illustrates the fact that he was now glorified. These were not just his friends anymore. These were not just his brethren anymore. Not just them. Uh, but now they, they have a fa familial uh, relationship. And he, was, and he called them children. He said, children, have you caught anything yet? And so... They answered out to him and they said no. They said no. And so Jesus gave them a piece of unwarranted advice. Jesus gave them some advice that they didn't ask for. He said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat. Throw your nets on the right side. Let's see, this is my right hand. Throw your nets on the right side of the boat. And so that's what they did. They threw their net on the right side of the boat. And in other words, Jesus was saying, try it a different way. Try another method. Uh, try another location. Uh, he, he helped them to stop, to pause, uh, to reassess, uh, to make the necessary adjustment uh, and try it again. He said, put your net on the right side of the boat. Uh, and so they did just what Jesus told them to do uh, without them knowing that it was Jesus. And so the Bible says that they caught a lot of fish and a lot of big fish, uh, 153 big fish uh, to be precise. Uh, in other words, uh, they got positive results. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and then uh, they recognized that this was the Lord. Uh, they recognized it was the disciple whom Jesus loved that recognized uh, that this indeed uh, was the Lord. Uh, Peter put some clothes on. Uh, he jumped out of the boat uh, and he went swimming and running to meet to greet Jesus. You know, Peter was a bit extra. <laughs> Peter was a bit extra, so he had to do a little more. And let me say to you today, if that's you, if you are a little extra, you get a little, you get a little more excited than somebody else. 
you have a bit more of an expression than somebody else, uh, that's all right. Uh, don't let anybody stop your praise. Uh, don't let anybody stop your expression of love. Uh, don't, anybody let, don't let anybody stop your excitement uh, because that's who God made you to be. Uh, and so you honor God. You bless God. You seek God uh, in, the authentic, uh, in the authenticity of who you are. And so uh, Peter, uh, he was a little extra uh, and he went out and he put on some some, some, some clothes, and he ran to meet Jesus. Now, when they got there, Jesus already had a meal cooking. Jesus already had some fish down there. Jesus already had the fire going. Jesus already had some bread baking. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? What does that look like? The living bread, making bread. Yes, sir. What does that look like? The one who spoke the wheat and the, and the oats into being, taking what he spoke into being, putting it in together and making bread. That must have been some good bread. Yes, sir, Jesus. And so... And so the Bible says uh, that Jesus was already cooking a meal uh, when he got there. Uh, and he said to them, he said, come on, uh, come on. Now, don't just use what I got. Uh, you bring some of the fish that you caught. Uh, and so Peter, the Bible says that Peter, uh, he pulled the net over. Uh, he pulled the net over with all of those 153 fish. Uh, and that net uh, did not break. Uh, and so that meant that they had the capacity uh, to handle the positive results. Uh, not only did they get positive results from doing what Jesus told them to do, uh, but they had the capacity uh, to handle uh, the positive results. They had the capacity uh, to handle the increase. Uh, somebody say amen. Uh, and so then Jesus uh, invited them uh, to come and eat. I heard the hymn writer say, come and dine. The master's calling, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who spread, the, he, he who fed the multitude, turned the water into wine to the hungry. God is calling, come and dine. Yes, sir. And so that's how, that's the, that's the third appearance from Jesus. And so listen here. Listen, listen. As I thought about this text, as I, as I thought about this text, I need to take a break We'll return back to the text in just a minute, but I need to take a break because I realize that I have some avid fishermen and women among us. I realize that I am surrounded by some fishing aficionados all around us. In Gethsemane, in Journey, yes, I realize that in my family, I got the G-men at Gethsemane who are fishing aficionados. I got the men, there are the men's ministry at the journey, some of whom are fishing aficionados. But don't leave the, men, the, the, the women out. The women know how to fish too. I got my, my assistant, Miss Rosa, who knows how to pull in some fish. And then there's my son, Destin, who knows how to fish and has, has taken it as one of his hobbies. And then there are so many others who are fishing aficionados, I'm calling you. Yes. And some of you know just where to go. Uh, Brother Scales, uh, some of you know just what time is best. Uh, Uncle Norman, uh, some of you... Uh, know just what bait to use, Miss Rosa, to get a certain kind of fish. And you know, I found as I started to think about this, I found that people fish, go fishing for many reasons. Some fish to eat, so that's for survival. Some fish as a hobby. Some fish for relaxation. Some fish for sport. Some fish because it is their occupation. It's how they make money. Others use a combination. They, they fish for a combination of those reasons. I was talking to my son as I was preparing this, and I was asking him why he likes to fish. He, he, he let me know that uh, he likes to be in nature. He likes to be, he likes fishing because it uh, puts him at one with nature. He likes being in and near the water. And he talks about how fishing can sometimes be competitive. 
And so whether you're competing against yourself, or whether you're competing against nature, or you, comp you go fishing with a group and you're competing with one another as to who can bring in the most fish, uh, fishing can be competitive. Uh, fishing, he said, can also be a mental challenge. Uh, you're trying to capture, you're trying to catch uh, what you cannot see. Uh, and then there's the thrill uh, of what you will get, uh, what will actually come out of the water. What is going to come out of the water? Are you going to get a little fish? Fish? Are you going to get a big fish? Are you going to get a huge fish? It's that thrill of what you can actually catch. Who will actually, or what will actually take the bait? And so there are many reasons I realize uh, that people fish. And I realize that it's the springtime. Uh, fishing can happen any time of year, but for some of you, it's your season. It's your time uh, to go fishing. I understand that. And, and so what I realized, what I realized, because I'm not one who is, a, who I, I would readily tell you I'm not a fishing aficionado. In fact, I went fishing once in my life, and the people I went fishing with when I was very young just uh, advised my grandmother that I should not come back fishing with them uh, anymore. So if anybody wants to try to take me, uh, I'm open for it. Uh, yes, but I just want to warn you that I had a bad experience before. Listen, what I realized is that fishing uh, takes preparation, uh, especially if one decides to go out on a boat. Listen, uh, to prepare to go fishing, I realized that one has to prepare their tackle box. Uh, and in their tackle box, they may put their bait to they might put some gloves, uh, they will have their pole, uh, they'll have the weight that goes on the end of the pole, uh, they'll have the bait that goes on the pole, that goes on the hook, uh, they'll have hooks to catch the fish, uh, and then, this is what I got from other people, but I started thinking, uh, you can't go fishing all day without having a snack for yourself, because uh, you can't cook the fish on the boat, uh, uh, some of you, uh, and so you got to have a snack for yourself. And then some of you need to have something uh, to keep your mind occupied uh, while you're waiting for the fish to bite. So you might want to take a book, um, might want to take uh, some music or something to keep your mind occupied. And now, if one would go out on a boat and fish, uh, I realize you take all of that stuff, you make your preparation, you got to wear the right, right clothes so you're not too hot, too uncomfortable. And then you got to go on the right boat. You got to choose the right location. And you got to go with the right time and the right, at the right time. And I understand, as I talked to Miss Rosa, and she told me about this, as I talked to my son, and he told me about this, I understand that a captain, a good captain, would have an idea as to have had the best idea or have the idea of the best location, should I say. The best location as far as where the fish are. Are. The best location as far as where you where you can find the bottom of the bottom so that you, you, you can catch the best fish as to wherever they are, if they're at the bottom, uh, and so that you can get the quality of the size of the fish uh, that you want. Uh, and certain captains, uh, my son tells me that it is standard now uh, to have some type of a camera. Uh, on the boat uh, and some kind of a camera that one that the captain can see underwater and that will help them uh, to see where the fish might be, where there's schools of fish that may be, but it also helps them to see the terrain that is under the water. It helps them to see where they're navigating to. It helps them to navigate in a more precise manner. Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, and a good captain, a good captain uh, will give you indication uh, that this is is uh, or that it may not be a good day uh, for fishing. A good captain uh, will give you indication uh, that this is a profitable, this is a good location to stop. Uh, this is a good captain uh, will have a, will put you in a place where you can drop your line uh, and you can fish. And, and even after you drop your line, uh, even after you do all of that, uh, you got to see if the fish will bite. You, you got to have the right kind of bait. So maybe a good captain might have an extra pole for you. A good captain might have might be able to give you some advice on the bait. And so a good captain will kind of help you in deciding what you will do as far as to help you to be successful in your fishing expedition. My God, yes. And so I, as I took that information, as I thought about that, I number one thought that a number of somebody may be listening.
listening to me uh, while they're fishing right now. Uh, and that's all right. The Lord bless you uh, to catch plenty of fish. Uh, but I thought about this. Uh, isn't it something, uh, isn't it something uh, that in this text, uh, even though the captain of the boat, uh, let's just say it was Simon Peter, who was already a master fisherman, um, and, the, and he was the ship's captain, we're going to assume, um, even though he was the ship's captain, uh, he didn't know in that instance uh, quite what to do to yield the success uh, that he was looking for in this situation. Uh, he did not know how to where to put his where to put his net so that he could find the fish that he was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yes. But there was one who was greater than Simon. There was one who was a greater, that was a greater captain than Simon, who was there all along. And I, I, I thank God that that one's name is Jesus. The Bible says he was standing on the shore. Isn't it amazing that Jesus could be standing on the shore but know how to guide the ship in such a way that it would yield, that it would get them in good water to yield the success that they were looking for. Somebody say yes. Yes, sir, I'm reminded of the poem Invictus, and I'm reminded of the line that says, I am the master of my fate, and I am the captain of my soul. And so today, God reminds us that God is the ultimate captain. Today, God reminds us that God is there with us. Today, God reminds us that God is guiding us through life's waters. Today, God reminds us that even even though you may not understand um, where life has taken you, um, you may not feel uh, the presence of the Lord. Uh, you may not, you may feel like you're aimlessly wandering about, uh, or uh, you may have just said, I'm just through with God uh, and through with God's church. Uh, that does not mean uh, that God will not be there with you. Uh, God has been there. Uh, God is there. Uh, and God will be there uh, all along. Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, God is right there uh, guiding you. Uh, God is right there uh, leading you. God is right there maneuvering, helping you to navigate the waters of life. Somebody say yes. And God will lead us to places that yield success. God will lead you to places that will yield an increase. Somebody say yes. God will lead you to places that you will meet with, that you will find the, the outcome that you're looking for. And I can hear Jesus asking the question to us right now. Children, have you caught any fish? Can can't you hear it? Can't you hear Jesus standing, um, ho uh, hollering out onto the sea, uh, hollering out to us, children, uh, have you caught any fish? Uh, children, uh, have you met with success? Uh, it's not that Jesus didn't know, uh, but Jesus is just giving us a chance uh, to reassess. Uh, it's not that Jesus is not aware as to what's going on. Uh, if he wasn't aware, uh, then he wouldn't be, well, he wouldn't have a meal planned. Uh, he wouldn't have prepared something already. Uh, oh, but Jesus is right there. Uh, children, uh, have you caught any fish? Uh, children, uh, have you met with success? Uh, children, uh, do you have the increase uh, that you're looking for? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, you know what, friends? Uh, We've got some stuff. Um, we've got some stuff that we've been doing, uh, that we've been doing around, uh, that we've been doing in our lives uh, that have yielded success uh, in past times. Uh, we've got some things uh, that we have done that has been successful. Uh, things around your house that you've done uh, that have been successful. Uh, things around your job, uh, the ways that you have, some things that you, some policies that you may have implemented, uh, some ideas that you may have had uh, that might have been successful. Uh, Things in your community uh, that you have done, uh, that you have led, uh, that you have participated in. Uh, 
that has been successful. Uh, and then finally, we have some things around ministry, uh, things around both all of our churches uh, that we have done uh, that might have yielded success. Uh, you may have, it may have yielded success uh, for you to go out on the corner and pass out tracks. Uh, it may have yielded success uh, for you to have a bake sale uh, in April every year. Uh, it may have yielded success uh, for you to have a dinner uh, or a fish fry uh, every fr on Fridays uh, during Lent. It may have yielded success uh, for this, that, or the other. However, it's something about that. Something, some things that you have doing, some things you, you, you may have, you just know how to do. It may not be yielding the same success now that it did in the past. Are you with me today? Some of those, those things that you know you, you know you know how to do. You know you know how to sew. You know you know how to cook. You know you know how to garden. You know you know how to sing. You know you know how to talk. How to how to how to talk to people. But somehow it's not meeting with the same success that it used to yield. You're not following. You're not finding the increase that uh, that that you used to have. And when this happens, friends, I want to suggest to you that you need to start looking for the resurrected Christ to start speaking to you. Yes you need to start looking uh, for how God will lead you uh, to, to say, uh, and you need to hear Jesus' voice, uh, even crying out to you right now. Uh, Children, have you caught any fish yet? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hear what Jesus is saying. Uh, uh, he's saying, take, cast your net uh, on the other side of the boat. Uh, he's saying, try it again. Uh, try a different method. Uh, try a different way. Uh, try, I'm, 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 I'm going to to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you uh, something else to do. I know you're good at it. I know you've had past successes. I know that this is the tradition in your family. I know that this is traditional in your church. But try something else. Try a different method. And if you would do what Jesus would say, we find these two things happening. Number one, when you follow Jesus' advice, then it yields positive results. And you will meet with success. You will meet with the increase that you're looking for. God will bless you in unimaginable ways. Somebody say yes. If you just do what he said. I heard the, Bible, the song say, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. Listen, when you follow Jesus' advice, yes, sir, when you answer his question honestly, I kind of skipped over that part. They were honest about what they were doing. They were honest about what, would hap what was happening at the time. They were honest about the fact that they were not successful in that moment. They were not uh, yielding any fish in that moment. They they were honest about that. Sometimes, friends, you got to just stop and be honest and say, you know what? This thing ain't working. You know what? The way that we're talking to one another right now, it's not working. You know what? You know, just the way that I am disciplining my child right now, it's not working. You know what? The way that we're dealing with one another right now, it's not working. You know what? Doing the same thing over and over and over again, just because it's tradition of having the same program uh, over and over and over again, uh, just because your grandmother did it uh, and your great grandmother did it, uh, it's not yielding the same results uh, that, that, that they found, uh, that they had. Uh, and so, won't you hear Jesus saying, Children, uh, have you caught any fish? Uh, and then, why don't you be, why don't you follow the examples uh, of the uh, disciples uh, who answered honestly uh, and said no? Uh, and then won't we hear what Jesus is saying? Let's try it. Try it again a different way. Try it again. Make the necessary adjustment. Try it again. You don't have to be tied to doing things one way all the time. But because we serve the resurrected Christ, because we serve the one who gives hope to the hopeless, because we serve the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave, we're not chained to death things. We're not chained to dead ways. Yes, God, I feel this thing. We're not chained to dead ways of thinking. We're not chained, chained to dead ways of doing things. But we are free to live. And we're free to live new life because of the resurrection. Because we're resurrected people. 
And so when we follow Jesus' advice, we will yield positive results. And not only will we yield positive results, but God will give us the capacity to handle the increase. Yes, sir. Our nets will not break. Somebody say yes. Your net won't break. God will give you the capacity. God will stretch you in a way that you can handle it. God will shift you in a way that you can bear it. God will help you to, to handle the success. God will help us to handle the increase. God will help us to manage what God gives us. The blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow to it. Yes, sir. God will set you up. Yes, sir. To do the will of God. Because as we, if we were to read on in this text, uh, this text goes into a, a conversation uh, that Jesus would have with Peter uh, and ask him, will he feed his lambs? Uh, will he feed his sheep? Uh, but I want to stop here uh, and say that God is setting some of you up. Uh, God is setting some of you up for a critical conversation. Uh, God is setting some of us up um, for, for a blessing uh, that we cannot have room enough to receive. God is setting you up, uh, yes sir, to do greater, uh, to do more. Uh, yet to touch a wider variety of people, uh, a wider span of people, uh, to be more effective in your community. Ah, uh, uh, yes, uh, God is setting you up uh, so that you can do a greater work. Uh, that's what he said uh, in the book of John. Uh, greater works uh, than these shall you do. Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, say yes. Say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so I hear Jesus saying, children, have you caught any fish? I'm going to tag this message. Have you caught any fish? Have you caught any fish? Yes, sir. And if you want to catch some fish, you got to hear what Jesus is saying. You've got to be honest about your response. And then you've got to follow Jesus' advice. And when you follow Jesus' advice, somebody say yes, God will give you the success. You will yield success and increase. And not only that, but God will give you the capacity to handle what God gives you. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Somebody open up your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Come on. All over the room. Clap your hands. Clap your hands and give God praise. Clap your hands and give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, friends. I heard the Lord while I was preparing this word. and to, uh, Talk to me about ministry. Talk to us about some of the things as we are going and as we are regaining a sense of normalcy, quote unquote, as we are regaining our lives. Some of you will go back to things and try to do things the same old way and try to do the same old things. But God is, God is saying that you may not find the results that you, that you once found by doing the same stuff. And so God asks us, children, have you caught any fish? And if the answer is no, then hear what God is saying. Hear what God is saying. Reassess it. Uh, make the necessary adjustments and try it again. Reassess it. Uh, make the necessary adjustments and try it again. Hallelujah. Pause. Pause. Reassess. Make the necessary adjustments and try again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you in your lives need to pause. Make the necessary readjustments. <clears throat> make, the, make the necessary uh, reassess. Make the necessary readjustments and try it again in your relationships, on your jobs, projects that you have going on in your life. Projects, some things that may not be, may, may not be yielding, may not be giving you what you need. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. And some of, for some of you, the, their, the things are going okay right now. And this word will come back around and mean more to you in some weeks from now, in some days from now. But remember, remember God's servant said, pause, make the necessary, reassess, make the necessary readjustments, and try it again. Hear Jesus calling to you. Children, have you caught any fish yet? Throw your net on the other side of the boat. 
Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for sending your word to help us. Thank you, Lord God, for your word reaching us. I pray, God, that your word take root in us and bear fruit in the name of Jesus. We thank you for these things. Thank you, Lord God, for those who are sick being healed today. Thank you, Lord God, for the headaches going away. Thank you, Lord God, for symptoms of COVID, symptoms of illness, symptoms of all kinds of illness going away. We thank you because you go to the root of issues. So we thank you for drying up tumors now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for, for killing cancer cells. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for getting to the root of mental conditions, Lord God, and speaking peace to troubled minds. Thank you for lifting the one who is depressed today, even right now. Yes, Lord, you're rolling depression away here. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you're speaking peace and calm to troubled minds. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus. Oh God, you're healing the one who's broken on the inside, who's had their feelings hurt. And we thank you right now for touching them. We pray, Lord God, for those who are engaging upon projects, engaging upon things and looking for success. Lord, we pray for them right now. We pray for those who are not finding the success that they're looking for. I pray, God, that you speak to them. Give them, Lord God, what to do. Give them strategy. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray for ministries now, Lord God, to give us to hear your voice. Lord God, so that we can reach new people and so that we can take your gospel, Lord God, and we can be a Effective in this world with your gospel. Hallelujah. We say thank you now. Thank you, Lord God. And we receive everything that you have for us. We receive it now. We receive it now. We receive it. A fresh anointing. We receive it. New, uh, we receive a sense of timing, Lord God. We receive it. We receive wisdom, Lord God. We receive power, Lord God, to do your will. We receive it now. Wisdom to hear you. Yes, Lord. Wisdom to speak and wisdom to be quiet. Hallelujah. We receive everything that we need in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Friends, if you're watching this today and you've not made a commitment to Jesus Christ, if you're watching this today and you have not allowed your faith to stretch so that you believe that Jesus both lived and died and rose again, today is your day. Now is your time. All you have to do is believe. That's the first step. Believe that Jesus lived, died, was buried and rose again. Just believe that. And then God will take that. God will help your faith to grow. And then you confess it. You just confess it with your mouth. And the Bible says by the confession of your faith. That's, that's how you salvation. That's how you begin your salvation journey. And you can start that with a prayer. You can just say, Lord Jesus. You can repeat after me. Go ahead. And, and if you're scrolling, don't just stop right there. Don't, don't move because this is your time. This is your moment. This is your moment. Hear, what, hear the Lord speaking to you right now. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I want to be your child. I believe with the little faith that I have, I believe that you live, you existed, that you died, that you were buried. And I believe that you rose again. I may not understand it, but I believe it. Something in me believes it. And one day you're coming back. And I believe it. I receive you into my heart. Come be the Lord of my life for the rest of my life. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, let me be the first to congratulate you. Congratulations, and welcome to your journey of discipleship. And if perhaps maybe you're watching me and you have disconnected from God's church, you've disconnected even from God totally, um, then let me just let me suggest to you that Jesus is there. God is there. God never left you. God has always been there. God is surrounding you right now. And God knows that God's people aren't perfect, but neither are you. So we can be imperfect together and then we can work together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can work together in the upbuilding of God's kingdom. And I would invite you, I would invite you to email us at prayer.lowerpgcluster at gmail.com. That's prayer.lowerpgcluster at gmail.com. We'll be glad to reach out to you. If you're watching, if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube or even on Zoom and you want to receive uh, immediate contact, just type in connect, connect, just type that in. Right now, we will connect with you, all right? If, you, if you're watching us and you want to say connect, do that right now, amen? God bless you, hallelujah. Come on, everybody, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Yes, sir, thank you, 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the souls that are coming in. Thank you for the souls that are coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I see them in the spirit. Thank you for the souls that are coming in. Thank you for effectiveness in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. Bless God's name forever. Listen, friends. Today, if you are worshiping with us, we thank God for each and every one of you. And if you want to journey with any one of our churches, we invite you to engage in worship. We invite you to engage in Bible study. We invite you to engage um, in any one of our fellowships. We invite you to engage with us. We invite you to come, come with us. We will do you well. And so... We are, uh, we are people who are seeking to please the Lord, seeking to know more about God. And so we invite you to do that. If you uh, want to journey with, if you want to engage with the journey, uh, United Methodist Church, we invite you that, that information is on the screen right now. And so we invite you to join with Pastor Parker for morning devotion on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We invite you to participate in Bible studies, fellowships. Do that um, if you choose to. And we invite you, we encourage you to do that. And so also, Gethsemane United Methodist Church, if you want to journey with Gethsemane or engage with Gethsemane, um, you can do that. Um, devotions five, Monday through Friday and on Thursday, we have at 9 o'clock, Monday through Friday, third, Friday at 9, and we have uh, devotions at 12 noon. We have Bible studies and we have all kinds of fellowships. So we invite you to, if you want to engage with Gethsemane, we invite you to do that. We invite you. It's open for anyone. Praise the Lord. And so we would be happy. We would be happy to join, for you to join in with us in, in, in ministry and in worship and in study and in service to, to our God and to God's people. Amen. If you would like to give to any one of our ministries, um, you can do so in uh, one of three ways. If you'd like to give to Journey, we invite you to do so. You can uh, give, uh, you can mail your gift, you can give online, or you can give uh, through Givelify. Any one of those three ways. If you would like to give to Gethsemane, United Methodist Church, you can give one of three ways. You can mail your gift, you can give online, or you can text your gift. Either one of those three ways for both of our churches. And we'll be happy to receive them. And we are changing lives. Both churches are changing lives. We're doing our best to change lives together for the kingdom of God. We're, we don't just worship together, but we serve. We're feeding the hungry. We are addressing issues of affordable housing. We are um, also addressing other issues in our community through our service. And so we invite you to uh, we we invite you to know that you are sowing into good ground. Hallelujah. Thank you. We we agree with you that God blesses you. God God blesses you going out and coming in. God blesses all what you put your hand to uh, because of your generosity. We agree with you that God makes you the lender and not the borrower. A delightsome and a wholesome land. We agree with you that God blesses you and causes you to be a blessing. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. I dare you to type in, I am blessed. Type that in right now. I am blessed. I am blessed. And we are blessed the way that we are experience the fullness of God's blessing is through our generosity. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, friends, we've had a great time together. We thank God and we again honor uh, the pastor of the journey, Reverend Michael Parker. We thank God for his leadership. He should be on Zoom right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we thank God for each and every one of you. So let's prepare uh, to go from this holy mountain and go out in service to the world. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine upon you. Lift up God's countenance and give you peace. The Lord calls us to hear God's voice asking us if we've caught any fish. The Lord calls us to answer honestly, and then the Lord calls us to obey, to follow the advice given so that we will yield success. The Lord give you the capacity to handle the blessing that God gives you. This is our prayer for you in Jesus' name. All of God's people said amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be blessed abundantly.